Hello friends. Happy Wednesday. Got some haunted bookshop in this basket billiard and uh, taking a break this afternoon. I'm still at work. Well, I'm still working. But I had a slow spot and I thought take a little break, have a bite. Talk to you guys for a bit. Uh, it's another hot one here today. 92. And uh, the shop's not air conditioned, so it's uh, it's warm. But that's okay. I wanted to talk about something today that um, it's going to appear political. It's 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 borderline political, but it's no one at me. It took me a while to sort of dig up the the information on this for for reasons that I'll talk about. The whole thing's just very strange. So, without getting into the politics of it, I just want you to focus on the events and just, just follow through this with me. So, there was a press conference of sorts that occurred the other day. It was by a group uh, that calls themselves Frontline Doctors. Uh, the group was founded uh, and were led by a doctor named Simone Gold. Uh, Simone Gold is an emergency room board certified ER doctor in Los Angeles. Uh, she's also a lawyer. Uh, went to Stanford Law School. And the point that this group is trying to make, at least from what I've been able to gather, is that we need to hear all sides in terms of what may or may not be working uh, for this COVID-19 mess, COVID-19 crisis. So they got together a group of doctors, including a woman who was named, or is named uh, Stella, I think Stella Emanuel. And these doctors took turns telling their experience with treating COVID-19 using a combination of drugs, including hydroxychloroquine, which you know the whole story behind hydroxychloroquine and, and uh, you know, President Trump saying that it, was, uh, that it worked and, and then the FDA giving an emergency approval uh, because there was a lot of evidence saying it did work. And then they backed off and said, uh, it's probably not working, so we're revoking that emergency approval. The doctors are still using it. And actually, there have been a couple of large studies, not large studies, but studies on this, but they've all been using different methodologies and things, and none of them are exa have exactly replicated what people are saying is working. And it's not just hydroxychloroquine, but it's that plus a particular type of antibiotic plus zinc. And the combination of these things has been shown in case studies all over the world, not just in the U.S., not just in this one doctor's uh, practice, but, but worldwide, uh, several reports from France, uh, other countries as well. This is, it appears to be working, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying it's a cure, I'm not, but it appears to be working. Now, the way science works is that you let those people present their case. And then you say, oh, if that's so, then this should also be true. And then you go and test it. And then you present your case. That's how science works. So these doctors were presenting their case. And in particular, this uh, Dr. Emmanuel, Stella Emmanuel, uh, she's uh, uh, from Cameroon. She is very animated. Um, she clearly was very impassioned about what she, she wanted to say. 
and she believes that she is saving people's lives, and she doesn't understand why more doctors aren't trying to save people's lives, in, you know, in her view. So this went on, and, and you know, really, that would have been the end of it. it was, that, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. This was just a group of doctors saying, hey, we think you should take a better look at this. The problem is that President Trump, as he often does, uh, decided to take to Twitter and comment on this. And he didn't comment on it per se, but he, he sent out a video, of, in particular, of Stella Emanuel, uh, which was circulating in social media and whatnot and said, this is a much must-watch video. No, that's not saying everybody should be taking hydroxychloroquine. It's not saying, I think Stella Emanuel is right about everything. It's just saying that this video is something worth thinking about, right? Well, what happened over the next few hours, uh, quite frankly, makes my blood run cold when I think about it. Every social media platform, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they all took down these videos. No explanation, they're just gone. Squarespace, the web provider, took down the doctor, frontline doctor's website. Gone. No explanation. No trial, no review, just gone. And then the media started to attack. And they have attacked in unbelievable fashion. So, Dr. Emanuel is a pastor. She's a Christian. And her church... Is, is in the tradition of the, the, the church she grew up in, in Cameroon. And I'm guessing, I do not know this for a fact, but I'm guessing that many of her, uh, many of the folks in her congregation are from Cameroon as well. And it is an unusual form of Christianity, similar to uh, the Haitian practices of, uh, I think it's called Santeria, where they sort of combine voodoo beliefs and Catholic beliefs and they come up with this sort of hybrid well there, there's some of that I don't want to I don't want to say that it's exactly that but there's there's clearly some aspects of that so they have a very firm belief in the existence of demons and they believe that we are at battle with demons now I'm a Catholic I actually believe that I don't talk about it as much as <laughs> as Dr. Emanuel does but sure there's evil in the world right I don't think that's that unusual She's a bit more colorful about it, though. She's a pastor. She's trying to excite her flock. She's trying to save her flock. Just like in this video, she was trying to save people's lives. But she never talked about any of this in the video. She only talked about her medical practice in the video. The headlines are that, essentially what they have implied is that Donald Trump wants to replace Fauci, and dear God, I hope he does replace Fauci, but he wants to replace Fauci with a woman that believes in demons. Now, that, and that's the kindest version of this that I can give you. I mean, they've gone rabid with this. Now, first off, the only connection between her and, and President Trump is that he said, you should watch this video. That's it. He never said, I'm going to replace Fauci or any of that stuff. <sighs> Judging someone's statement based on a completely unrelated statement that they made is a logical fallacy. So if I tell you Haunted Bookshop is a good tobacco, and then I tell you I believe the Phillies won the World Series in 2017. Well, I'm wrong about one of those two things. Maybe I'm wrong about both of them. Because it, it, it's a, uh, a matter of opinion. And I'm going to lose my battery here. So that... 
Let's try it again. So, if I tell you that I am really enjoying this pipe right now. And last week I told you that I believe the country is actually controlled by green pig, pigs that walk on two legs and uh, speak Swedish. you would believe one of those statements and not believe the other. I don't think many of you would say, hey, that's that guy that talked about the green pigs. I don't believe that he's enjoying that pipe right now. Now you might say that's the guy that talked about green pigs. I'm not going to listen to him, and that's okay. That's okay. But, but you can't discount the information because of the source. And this is, a, this is a common logical fallacy. Now, yes, there is the idea of the boy who cried wolf. You know, if, if you get bad information from the same source over and over and over again, you're going to start to suspect that information. But you shouldn't discredit it because of the source. That's, that's the key point. You can say, I don't trust it, but you can't say it's not true. And, you know, that's what they're doing. But they're not just doing that. They're, they're using it as a personal attack against this doctor, as a personal attack against the president. They've turned this into a whole ball of hate <laughs> to, in an attempt to bring down... Let me back up. They've focused this into this meme of hate that honestly is only intended to discredit people and has no basis in fact. And at the same time that they've done this, they've taken away the evidence to the contrary. They've censored it because according to uh, the social media platforms, the American people can't be told anything that is not absolutely known to be true because we're not smart enough to interpret those facts. We're not smart enough to think about two opposing ideas and, and try to decide which one is right. We, we, we're not smart enough for that. We need to be censored. We need to have that information censored out of existence so that we don't even get the opportunity to think about it. That is not the way science works. That is not the way med medicine progresses. It's certainly not the way a free society handles information. Now you can you can get political about this, and I'm really trying not to. You can look at this and you can say, well, I don't like President Trump, I don't think that he's a good president, and I don't think that he should be talking about COVID-19. Fair enough. That's, that's a, a reasonable... Uh, approach. That's a reasonable way to think. And, and yeah, absolutely. You might say, I think President Trump's the best president ever, and, you know, he, his statements on COVID-19 should be taken into consideration. Yeah. But you shouldn't say, I think Trump's a moron, and therefore everything he says is wrong. Or, I think Trump's a god, and therefore everything he says is right. Those are both equally logically flawed stances. I hope there are enough people left out there that understand that point and, and that are thinking about these things and that are trying to find truth in the world. But when so many people rely on social media platforms to get their news, I'm not convinced that it's it's going to make a bit of difference. When you can't get the information, do you even know? I'm honestly afraid of this. I'm scared. I've never seen such a complete cover-up followed by a disinformation um, campaign 
in my lifetime that happened so quickly and so efficiently. And it took me more than an hour this morning to sort through before I could get to the actual truth. And if it hadn't been for the fact that somebody that I follow on Twitter followed somebody on Twitter that happened to follow Dr. Simone Gold that pieced this together, I never would have known about it. You know, I would have had the same information that most other people have on this, which is, you know, oh, President Trump wants to replace Fauci with this crazy woman. None of it's true. So there you have it. I don't know how much of this is going to make it through. I, I have to probably heavily edit this, if nothing else, for time. I think I've gone a bit long, but um, there's some things here that I, I don't want to be misinterpreted. I really didn't want this to be a political discussion, and uh, you know we'd be having the same discussion right now regardless of the political party of the seating president. It's more about the truth. It's more about the way information is being controlled. It's about something I talked about a long time ago, social programming. The idea that we are being fed a version of reality that is not entirely consistent with our experience. Um, well, I'm going to finish my pipe and then I'm probably going to make a tinfoil hat. If you watched this long, thank you. I hope you're all having a good week. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to a nice weekend ahead. It's, uh, it's going to be hot for a while here. We will be on Friday night. Uh, it's Virtual Pipe Club. Don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll we'll be having fun with it one way or the other. Haven't been making um, as many videos as I usually do, just because I've been busy, and it's been hot. Uh, I'm sorry to use that as an excuse, but it's true. Anyway, folks, I'm going to let you go. Have a great rest of your Wednesday and rest of your week, and I'll see you Friday night. Bye now.